Okay, you all just ate strawberry ices, Italian ices. So now we're just going to shift gears and make strawberry ice cream. I never did it before, but we'll give it a shot. Just plain old good strawberry ice cream. The number four seller in the world. Number one is vanilla. vanilla. Number two. Chocolate. Number three. Cookies and cream. Pistachio. Pistachio, right. All right. So uh, we need uh, five quarts of mix. This should be five quarts, right? No. You took five and then you took one. So we're short. We're short. Would you grab a bag of mix in the refrigerator? Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Yes, sir. Um, do you ever just mix, you know... Ask that in the Q&A, &A, all right? Uh, <laughs> get rid of that. All right. So here I have uh, strawberries. Are you writing back there, Secretary? Yes. Okay. We have uh, six, four pounds of strawberries. And in the Q&A, you can ask about fresh versus frozen, too. Oh, great. Uh, we need five. We need five quarts in here. Come on, you're working now. I don't know, there's no five on the side, so you got to go midway between four and six. Can you handle it? Hey, I'm just saying. So we'll put in... Uh, we'll put in uh, strawberries. How much? Okay. If that fits in here, I don't know. Not fitting, is it? So what we'll do is we'll make it fit. I like strawberry ice cream. I don't like strawberries, but we'll see. It's not what I like, right? Okay, we got them. Uh, anywhere. This is uh, Torani. Coffee, you know, you make uh, cap strawberry cappuccinos with it. So we'll add some of this. All right, so all we're going to do is we're going to put five plus quarts. Hey, I didn't spill any. Correct. It was put in on the side. Okay, five quarts of mix. Should we add some vanilla? Yes. Why not? Yeah. Um, where's the vanilla? Here's the vanilla. So we need another five ounces because we have five quarts in. So let's add five ounces of vanilla. Boy, so far everything's been cool? delicious. Is it too cool in here? Yes. A little too cool. Okay. And then we'll add a little, uh, we'll turn it on. Now, when you're making something like strawberry, can it be too strawberry? No. No. But it can be not strawberry enough, but it can't be too strawberry. So let's just add all this. So what's happening? So far, everything's tasted good, yeah. even what you made. <laughs> See what I mean? Uh, I started it and said, if that idiot Steve Thompson can do this, imagine what I can do. It's true. And what could be better? You end up, you're going to make these products every day. 
of the week. I make it once every two months. Your products will be so much better than mine. Uh, making these products is, is mathematical. I, I tell people that, and, they, and uh, I haven't found a good way to describe it, but if you want to do a cake, uh, and I've never baked a cake, but if I was going to do a cake from scratch, it would have a certain amount of flour, a certain amount of water, and a certain amount of sugar, and a certain amount of flavor. And that would make it a cake. If I add more water, it's not a cake. If I add more sugar, it's too sweet. So there's a mathematical formula there. So all my formulas, uh, over 350 of them, are up on my website for you to take for free. When we say that you get lifetime technical support with an Emory Thompson, we mean lifetime and we mean any Emory Thompson. Uh, I want you to buy a new machine because there's nothing more critical to your store. You know, on July 4th, if your 40-year-old used machine goes down, we'll guarantee to have you a new machine in six weeks. And by that time, you're out of business. But you have a 40-year-old machine and you got a problem, you call us. You got a Capigiani and you don't know how to make something, you call us. We'll help you because we make the best machines in the world and you're going to end up buying from us anyway. If not from today, another day. It sounds braggadocious, Two? but you know, Babe Ruth in New York once said at the very best, he was asked about his batting, batting prowess, how well he could hit, and he said, it ain't bragging if you can do it. And uh, we can do it. So we're going to add all these more videos today. You'll see all this on uh, Emory Thompson. Uh, you like strawberry. Love it. So taste it, see if it's uh, ready to roll. Well, did you follow the, the, the formula? There is no formula. Okay. Just, I've never he made it before. Like so That's got a lot of good strawberry. The dairy, of course, brings out the strawberry taste. It's you great. More strawberry? You, how much more you got? Oh, I got. Like what? <laughs> well, I got this. What is that? Smell it. <laughs> oh, go for it. Whoa! Whoa! Not, not too much. But look, we're up to the top here. I don't care. It'll take longer to freeze. Just add it? Yeah. I like it. Might take a little longer to freeze. Because of the sugar. Is that alcohol or sugar? No, this is Tarani. Oh, okay. It, you put these in your cappuccinos. Oh. That's not the regular Tarani, right? This is the signature series. I, I drink black coffee. What would I know? <laughs> Me too. Okay, what do you think? Good. Good. Okay, so we have a bottle and two thirds, uh, which translated to ounces, 25, we have uh, 16, 30, we have 40 ounces. Are you gonna turn it on? <laughs> um. What's all this mixing stuff? See, for the first five minutes, nothing's going to happen. It's just getting colder and colder and colder. So there's your mixing. So he, he, he's, wait, he's burning my daylight by just letting it mix like this. It's not necessary. I could make you so much more efficient. Right. But I've only made 56,000 gallons of ice cream. Now, now you're bragging. No, that's all I've made. You've made far more than that. No, I haven't. <laughs> way less than that. 56,000 gallons of ice cream. Unbelievable. In a store that started out what size? Uh, 700, no, no, 75 square feet. 70, well, 80 square feet. From in the back there. Uh, one hour. Uh, and even north, then, he, northeast. And even then he was complaining. He used to stand in the back and go, I can do it better. <laughs> well, after I gagged a little. <laughs> You know what a good name for this is? Strawberries and cream ice cream. That's nice. Did you see what's up here? This is brownies, homemade brownies. No, that's Ghiardelli brownies. Ghiardelli homemade brownies. Wow, well, they just let you buy. I gave Paula brownies. More questions. Okay, any, are we doing a formal Q&A or yes. just a stand-up Q&A? No, we'll do a formal. Okay. I want to sit down. Okay, okay. And then we'll Hold, have lunch. Yes, sir. The, the recipe that you use it for the strawberries is, seems to me a little expensive. You use oh, 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 all right, oh, here we go. Here we you go. What, you'll be the first question on the Q and A. Yes. Okay. Cost the first, doesn't matter. Caught this boy, doesn't it ever? <laughs> okay. We'll get to you during the Q and A. 
Cost doesn't matter. A little expensive. And, I and, could and pour I, dollar bills in here and it wouldn't matter. And let me tell you, I'm a convert because I was the one, you know, I, when you were out of the room, I complained about the sugar. And, <laughs> but when it comes to flavoring, cost doesn't matter because it's, it's like the baseball Pennies. movie. If you build it, they will come. Pennies. You make the work. I can make you a product suitable to sell at the Denver baseball stadium. Have they ever won? I don't think they've ever won anything. Um, suitable to sell there. Or I can give you something like Cafe Ferrara that's got lines around the block. And when you're making lines around the block, it doesn't matter what the food cost is because you're going to recoup it. Um, but Jeff will talk about that. But while I got a second, one of the biggest things happening in my industry is pint sales. And um, not to offend anybody, because it's not offensive, but um, what's driving pint sales is the millennial age group 21 to 39. Now, I'm at the tail end of the baby boomers. He's at the old end of the baby boomers. And um, we are 72 million strong. The, the millennials are 85 million strong. The fact of life is we're aging out someday, and the millennials will be here for a very long time. They are a huge part of your target. Now, the millennials decided one day, because my four children are millennials, they're all professionals, and uh, they make a good income. But they spend like they've got an outrageous income. And I finally figured out how they do it. Uh, you know, they live in Manhattan, so they're dry, they're, they don't own a car, they're driving, uh, taking Uber everywhere. They have no interest in a house at this point. Uh, we grew up, you know, after you bought the car, the next thing you had to do is you had to put a, a mortgage you cannot afford and spend the rest of your life trying to pay it off on a house. Well, my son and daughters don't have any, sons and daughters have no interest in a mortgage. So they've got a lot of money. They're spending it on food and beverage and buying the best they can. So it wasn't good enough just to make <clears throat> uh, a six pack of Budweiser for $6 and buy it on a Friday afternoon on the way home. Now it's uh, wicked blue moon, crooked sun, uh, locally sourced craft beer. I mean, the names are great. And it's $15 and it's selling like crazy. So what I believe, the other thing that's selling like crazy is pints. We, pint sales are through the roof with my customers. And I believe it's similar to the craft beer. Uh, you make a fabulous product with fabulous ingredients, and instead of paying $4.25 for a pint, they'll pay seven, eight, nine dollars The average right now amongst my customers around the country is $8 for a pint. And uh, that means there's enough money in that pint that you can easily uh, uh, use the highest quality ingredients there are. And by using high quality ingredients, you get more people coming in. Uh, the other thing that happens is a pint only lasts a short amount of time. You uh, 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 take it home. Uh, ladies, I'm giving up all our secrets, but when we, buy, when we men buy a pint of ice cream on the drive home, there's teeth marks in it. And as soon as we, and then we smooth them over, but there's an indent. So you watch. The first thing we do when we get home with that pint is we rip the top off and put a spoon in it and take a bite so you can't see that we've already attacked it. Then we have some for dinner. Then we have, uh, like me, might have a little, another scoop at uh, 11 o'clock at night. And so that pint's gone in about a day and a half, uh, which does two things. It means that it was, a, it was a, a reward to me to buy it. I deserve it. I had a great week. Or I have a lousy boss. He's driving me nuts. I'm going to drown my sorrows in this pint. Uh, but I will spend the money. I'll spend $8 for a pint and not even think twice about it. Uh, because uh, it's going to disappear so fast and it's always under freezer. It's not in a scooping cabinet. It's always frozen solid. I have no chemicals in it. I don't have polysorbate 80. I don't have to have any gums or even natural ones like uh, locust bean or carrageenan. I don't have to do it because the stuff isn't going to be around long enough. Want proof of it? Go buy some haagen -Dazs. Milk, cream, sugar, skim milk. That's all it says. And flavor. Um, so I asked Penn State when I was last there, the head of it, I said, okay, my family put haagen and Ben and & Jerry in the business. <coughs> Why do they only sell it in pints? Why not quarts? Why not half gallons? And the answer to me was astounding. They said, because you'll pay $8 for a pint. You might even pay double that. You might 
you better bring one home for your significant other or spouse or whomever. So you might buy two, but you'll pay $8 for a pint, but you won't pay $32 for a half gallon. If I'm going to buy a half gallon of ice cream, hey, that's for my friend. They can eat briars. I'll keep the good stuff for myself. So you're not afraid of a pint. Uh, but you'll never sell a half gallon or a gallon at those costs. You'll just say, whoa, this is way too much. And now you're hurting your reputation. So pint sales are just insane how good they are right now. And I think they'll stay that way. And it's thanks to this age group willing to spend money on quality foods and beverages. We never did. I mean, let me show you how I used to make strawberry ice cream. This is pre-Jeff. And, and quite frankly, I have to give credit where credit's due. Jeff taught me to make ice cream by going to the supermarket and buying stuff. I mean, it couldn't be easier. We used to buy, I'm hiding the name, this is called a number 1010. This is three quarts of the cheapest strawberries that can't be sold anywhere else in any supermarket in a heavy corn syrup, uh, heavy gloppy syrup with red dye 40. And we used to open this can up and pour a quart in here, and that was strawberry ice cream. And people loved it. This is great. And then this new generation came along, and they said, we're not going to eat that stuff. And, and it literally changed the world. They are changing us for the better. They are also the, the most amazing entrepreneurs. Uh, they have no fear. Uh, we, my age group goes, yeah, I got to do a market analysis and I got to think about that. And, you know, maybe I don't want to work that hard. They just say, hey, let's go into the uh, ice cream business. You want to go into the ice cream business? Sure. Okay. Let's call Steve, order a machine. <laughs> it's that simple. So ice cream and ices have come just a tremendously long way. One last thing, dairy-free ice cream. The millennials don't eat ice cream as much as we baby boomers do. My children, if I have them for Christmas dinner, will eat Haagen-Dazs because they grew up on it. That's what I bought. But they don't have pints of Haagen-Dazs in their freezer because they're really not that keen on dairy. This is a non-dairy product. It used to be called vegan. Vegan's a horrible name or lactose or, pe or ice cream for or frozen dessert for lactose intolerant people. <laughs> that sounds worse. But vegan sounds like a 90-year-old man uh, who weighs 89 pounds and you just want to buy him a decent meal because he's going to blow away. This is all pure stuff. It's technically vegan, but some of my millennial customers in Southern California said, we got to come up with a better name. So they started about two and a half years ago calling it dairy-free ice cream. Uh, it, it's very descriptive and it sounds a heck of a lot better than vegan. It is an oxymoron because there is no ice cream, there is no dairy in it, so it really is an ice cream. But it scoops like ice cream, it has a similar taste to ice cream, and I am targeting a specific group, a very large group. It's easy to make, it's like making Italian ice, but it's a coconut base. And then I start eating it, and, and, and hate to admit to be getting uh, slightly uh, older, not by much, uh, but you get to an age where you start to say, I can't eat a filet mignon every night for dinner. I mean, the, the thing is just killing my gut. It, it, it stays in your system for 72 hours. Your body just is looking for something less heavy than a filet mignon. So you discover this product and you say, you know, that's really light and healthy. And not Forget the healthy. It's light. It's delicious. My cardiologist loves it. It will never, ever in a million years replace Jeff's ice cream but I'm trying to get this largest group of people ever existed. So if I had 15 flavors of uh, uh, ice cream, I'd have two flavors of dairy-free. And now I'm introducing, and while you're there, you go, whoa, his mint chip really is good. So you're introducing a new age group to fantastic ice cream. And that's all I'll say. This is, uh, it's spelled M-A-M-I-S. M-A-M-I-S gelato.com. She calls it Mommy's, which is Italian for uh, M-A-M-I-S. It sounds like it's Mammy's, but we can't use Mammy's in the South or anywhere else. Yeah. Excuse me? Uh, I don't know, uh, and we'll pass those out. Uh, but, 
you can always call me on it. Uh, great stuff, really great, and, and taking off like wildfire. It's a trend, it's not a fad. Uh, I don't have a lot of these. If I run out, I'll find some more, but... Um, you already got it. Anybody yeah. missing one? Okay. okay. Yes. Could you pass that? Thank you. There you go. This is a great so uh, resource. And Jeff's done. How about some ice cream? All right. <laughs> uh, strawberry ice cream. We haven't? They're going into sugar shop. Yeah. Oh, for years. So they're Thai nice. They do.